Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the all new Dodge Charger Daytona SRT, aka Dodge's new fully electric muscle car. Before we get into this video, though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. I wanted to wait a little bit before I made this video so that I could give you guys some thoughtful impressions rather than just kind of diving into this car as soon as it was released and then yeah anyways let's get into the facts first with the car and then we'll get into my impressions as someone that worked for dodge for some time and is just frankly a muscle car enthusiast so first off it'll have an 800 volt electrical architecture which all you need to know means that it'll have faster charging times and it'll be more efficient so it'll have more power the porsche Taycan uses a similar architecture now, aside from that, it's going to be all wheel drive, which is a huge departure from the Hellcat that it is replacing because there's never been an all wheel drive Hellcat except for that uh, Hellcat police car conversion that Armor Max, it's actually a local Utah company did where they made an all wheel drive, like bulletproof Hellcat, coolest, coolest car ever. I'm sad that I wasn't a YouTuber at that point because that would've been such a fun car to review, but back to the Daytona. It's also gonna have a multi-speed transmission similar to the Porsche Taycan. That has a two-speed transmission. This will help out with efficiency and then also with acceleration. We don't know how many speeds it'll have, but so far, electric cars with multi-speed transmissions have had two speeds. Think about this for a second. We're eventually probably gonna to get to the point where electric cars will have as many speeds as what combustion cars have today. So like eight to 10 speed transmissions, which will be crazy, but I don't think we're too far off uh, from that. It also have a boost button similar to the Genesis GV60. I just reviewed that and that's a fun feature to have on a car. And so I'm all about it. It'll basically just give it more power than what it already has. And yeah, just crazy acceleration. And then it also has a fake exhaust. Well, they're not calling it a fake exhaust, but I'm calling it a fake exhaust. Basically what it sounds like they've done is they've put some microphones up to the electric motors and then put it through like a speaker system or something and amplified the sound by a massive amount. So it's like 120 decibels, crazy loud. Like if you guys don't know how loud 120 decibels is, I had a Shelby GT350 on the channel when I first started this channel. And I think that exhaust, which is ridiculously loud, was like 110 decibels. So suffice to say, this exhaust is loud. Does it sound good? Well, you guys have probably already seen the videos of this car rolling through uh, the streets with all the people and doing a couple of revs. And so, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but you guys can let me know right now if you think it sounds good or not. Now, aside from that, from a design perspective, I think that Dodge has absolutely nailed it. So it is a two-door muscle car and it has retro styling. And that's something that Dodge has stuck with with their muscle cars, unlike Chevy and unlike Ford, right? The Mustang looks like a sports car now and the Camaro looks like a sports car, which I don't think they look bad, but they don't look like what they used to look like, right? Whereas this literally looks like pretty much every other Dodge muscle car, which I absolutely love. So I'm glad that they've stuck with the retro styling on the outside. And it's a very long car. It seems like it's paying homage to like older muscle cars that just had like way too much hood and way too much <laughs> trunk, which some of you guys might like that styling. I personally kind of liked the shorter look of the current generation Challenger. And so, yeah, I'll have to see one in person to really be able to tell you guys if I like the looks of it or not. But overall, I think they did a good job. Interior wise, it looks like they're doing what every other automaker is doing with the interiors, which I'm not too happy about. And that is going for an extreme minimalist design with having a massive screen and probably all the features are gonna be in the screen. It has like a cool little transmission selector. And you guys will see the little photos that I'll have here on the uh, video from Dodge. Uh, but overall, I think the interior looks really good. I think that Dodge has actually done a pretty good job with their cars from an interior perspective. They don't necessarily always have the nicest materials, but the design and you know some of the little touches like the gauge cluster and everything typically look pretty cool. And so uh, what it looks like they're trying to go for with this car is again, a retro modern design. So minimalist design, but then having some retro elements, which I, I think it'll actually uh, work when it all comes together. And it plays with the theme of this being a fully electric uh, muscle car. So that's pretty much all we know at this point. Again, this is ultimately just a concept right now. And so as time goes on, we'll get more information. This will most likely come out as a 2024 or a 2025 model year car. So we're still a few years out from actually seeing this car in full production format. And so let's get into my opinions on this car and then some things that could happen to this car since it's not gonna come out for a few years. 
So first off, like I said, styling, I think it looks great uh, with the exterior, the interior. Again, I'm not a huge fan of some of the minimalist designs with some of these modern cars because I like having like physical buttons and everything. And so hopefully it's user friendly enough and hopefully they don't go all in on like the Tesla design where you have everything in a touchscreen and no controls outside of that, which is just super frustrating for me as a user of vehicles. So I, I, I trust them to do things uh, right because ultimately Dodge is really good at listening, listening to their customers. Now, in terms of the performance, obviously it's going to be absolutely insane because it's a fully electric car. Fully electric cars have insane accelerations. I mean, we have been seeing Hellcats getting destroyed by Teslas for years now, since like what, 2015, 2016, right? And so this will finally give Dodge an edge to beat uh, automakers like Tesla with acceleration, but they are doing it at the cost of why people actually buy these cars. Yes, people buy Hellcats because they're fast, but they also buy them mostly because of the theater that the car provides. That 6.2 liter supercharged V8 sounds phenomenal and paired to a big robust muscle car that has rear wheel drive and tires that are too small. It is just such a thrill to drive. There's nothing else like it on the market. The closest car that you can get to that's similar to a Hellcat is the Shelby GT500, which frankly doesn't sound as good in my personal opinion. I just reviewed one recently and the Hellcat powertrain definitely sounds better. And then also the Camaro ZL1. Again, that's another car which the powertrain just doesn't sound quite as good as the Hellcat uh, powertrain. And on top of that, both of those cars are so into the performance side of things in terms of cornering ability and everything and grip that they don't have the same crazy theater that the Hellcat has where it doesn't get grip ever. And it's just a blast to drive because you're not worried about zero to 60 times and you're not worried about cornering ability. You're just worried about having fun in the car. And I think that this car is basically going to give up a lot of that because all wheel drive means you're going to have tons of grip. It doesn't have an engine anymore, so you're not gonna get the same sound. And I understand that they're making this car loud, but there's a big difference between something being loud and actually sounding good. Now, I haven't heard it in person. I've only heard the videos, and in the videos, it doesn't sound nearly as good as a Hellcat. A lot of people commented that they should have just basically recorded a Hellcat and put Hellcat sounds with it, and I agree with that. I think that's the route they should have gone, not putting a microphone up to electric motors because it's electric motors. They don't sound good. Come on, Dodge. Come on. Hopefully they change that when they, you know, fully release the car. But overall, I think that, you know, acceleration junkies are absolutely going to love it. And people that daily drive this car are also going to love it because ultimately it'll be a big, plush, comfortable daily driver car that'll actually be efficient because it'll be fully electric and you'll be able to just charge it at home and all that kind of stuff. So there are some big benefits to it. But the large Hellcat enthusiast base is probably not going to go for this car. Again, some people might transfer over because they'll just want the acceleration, but most people, frankly, are just going to go and run to Dodge dealerships and buy Hellcats right now while they're still available because they want the theater that that car provides. And so I think that, you know, obviously it would be awesome if Dodge could keep building Hellcats, but with how things are going in the world, it doesn't seem like that's going to be possible. And so maybe do like a, you know, Disconnect with the driveline where maybe just the rear electric motors are used so you can still have some rear wheel drive burnout funds. I don't know. And then also, like I said, maybe add the Hellcat sounds to it so that it'll sound really good to, I don't know. There's there's some things that they could do to tweak it a little bit. The last thing I wanna mention is, you guys know I went to an event with Brembo, which Brembo makes the brakes for the Hellcat. And at this event, I got to test Brembo's new braking technology, which I'm guessing will most likely be in this new Hellcat. So. The, well, whatever you want to call it, right? Basically the independent braking system. If you guys haven't seen that video already, just go look it up where I review it on a Tesla Model 3 and everything. But I wanted to mention that in this video because I think that'll ultimately kind of transform this new EV from Dodge quite a bit. It'll actually have braking power unlike Dodge muscle cars in the past. This video is getting a little bit too long, so that's gonna sum things up. I want you guys to let me know what you think about this new full electric muscle car from Dodge. I'm guessing that I'm gonna get a lot of comments uh, basically hating on the car because again, it just doesn't have the soul of the Hellcat. But still, I really wanna hear your opinions on it and I guess that I can't talk anymore. So that'll sum things up, I'll see you.